Hi everyone, this is Nancy. I hope you're enjoying your day. I sure wish I could be there with you. I was really excited when Susan told me about the event until I heard the date. <laughs> I'm just a little far away to be able to drive over and make this one. Um, so I was thinking about what I could present to you all. I know some of you are very experienced, I don't want to say old, demonstrators, and have probably seen every technique that's ever been done. Um, so because of that, I decided just to focus on some oldie but goodie techniques. You know, sometimes what's old is new again. As much as I love our designer series paper, sometimes I just don't have the color or um, the style of designer paper that I want to go with the card that I'm envisioning. But because we have so many cool inks, different color families, we can actually make any designer paper that we want to. So that's what I decided to focus on. I remember when I first started with Stampin' Up, we used to do a lot of different fun and strange techniques and several were for backgrounds. So I'm gonna focus on backgrounds using saran wrap, cling wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you wanna call it. Actually, I just went to the dollar store and picked up a roll I love our Dollar Tree. They have all sorts of stuff that I'm always getting sucked into. <laughs> uh, then I peruse Stampin' Connection because that has great, great um, projects that you can look at. I also checked out Split Coast Stampers, Pinterest, of course, and YouTube. So let's get started. This first um, project I'm going to show you, I'm going to present Actually, I saw on Kathy Williams' um, YouTube, she's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and um, I hadn't seen this before, so I thought I'd give it a try. What you do is you take three different color of ink pads, and I'm going to use Sahara Sand, which is one I don't use very often. Um, so it, it was nice to see it you know, being pulled in, I think. Uh, Tranquil Tide, and can I tell you how much I love that color, Tranquil Tide, and Mary Merlot. And can I tell you how much I love Merlot? So anyway, this technique is um, using plastic wrap as daubers. So I just took a wad of plastic wrap and secured it with, um, what is this? Oh, a clothespin. I got these from the Dollar Tree too. Then you just go into your ink pad and you're dabbing or daubing onto your cardstock. Now this is a piece of very vanilla 4x8 and so you start with your first color that was Sahara Sand. Oops, I got ink on me already. And then the next one is Tranquil Tide and you can stamp, double stamp, whatever. And then you go to your Mary Merlot. Now I kept all of the pads open during the whole time in case I wanted to go back and fill in any holes. So, um, by a miracle, this is what the piece ended up looking like. Isn't that cool? I love the texture. The cool thing about this technique is you will never be able to replicate it. There's no way you can get exactly the same look. So that makes it unique all in it, all by itself. After I finished with the stamping, I cut it down so that I had a four by five and a quarter background piece. And I put that on my card base. And from the remaining piece, I, um, I stamped this little twig or branch or whatever it is from Jar of Love and yikes and this um, little leaf from Colorful Seasons I then embossed them I stamped them in Versamark and I embossed them in our copper embossing powder and cut them out with the thinlets dialets as you can see that's that's been cut out. So with 
So I put the, the one piece as a background for my card. I used the other piece to cut these out. And this is what the card ended up looking like. So um, my base is Tranquil Tide again. It's five and a half by eight and a half. And I just cut it, or um, not cut it, huh, folded it in half. I die cut this oval out of our copper foil, which I just love. Then I copper embossed the sentiment. And um, that also came from the Colorful Seasons. And that's on the Sahara Sand. I layered all of that. Oh, I also cut a cute little leaf out of the copper. I layered all of that using dimensionals and stuff. And then I wanted a bow, which I, I couldn't find any color that I had that was um, not retired. So what I did was I had some old baker's twine. I'm sure you guys probably have plenty of that too. And all the variety of colors, some we don't even have anymore. And I just used a dauber and laid it on my Mary Merlot ink pad and just daubed it until I dyed it. Then I, I tried to dry it with <laughs> my heat tool which would have worked except I was a little bit um, too impatient. So I got a little bit inked, but that's okay because you're not really a stamper unless you're inked, right? So anyway, this is how it turned out and I really, really like it. I really, really like it. I hope you do too. Okay, so then the second presentation I'm going to do is called Plastic Wrap Highlight Technique. And Kelly Atchison, who is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, is the one that I saw do this. And I was thinking about late summer and early fall, so wanted to do some Gerber daisies. And I googled colors for Gerber daisies, and I was astounded at the color combinations. They can't possibly grow like that, can they? That's just too strange. So what you want to do is stamp a sentiment and some large images on a piece of Whisper White. And I used um, a three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. I also selected our Daisy Delight set because, I mean, why not? If you want Gerber daisies, that's the one to use, right? And then what you're going to do, oh, and I used our Memento ink to stamp that with. So then what you're going to do is take some plastic wrap and just kind of wad it up. And you're going to learn how to open these <laughs> new ink pads, you're going to just kind of use this piece of um, wadded up plastic wrap to add color. So I'm going to start with Balmy Blue, I think that's the name of it, that's one of our new ones, which I'm not crazy about for a background because it, it can be a little dark, so I'm stamping off and then stamping onto, onto my card. And you want to just, you know, wherever you think you want sky, you want to do it. Now, this look actually kind of reminds me of, you know, you remember when people used to sponge onto their walls back in the 80s? It kind of looks like that to me. But whatever, it's a cool technique. So then, let's see. I'm going to do one of my Gerber daisies, and I'm going to use this new petal pink which I think is really pretty, and squish up another piece of saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever, and just go in and hit my leaves. Now, when you start doing your flowers, you're going to want to use colors that kind of coordinate so that you can blend them a little bit in so you don't have just, you know, blotchy looking colors all by themselves sitting out there looking lonely. So then for the center, I used Flirty Flamingo, which is so cute. Let's see. And that just goes right in the middle. There. 
Okay? So that's a really, this is a really easy, easy, easy technique to do. Um, the colors I used, the other colors I used, and let me show you how this turns out. I used um, Poppy Parade with crushed curry, and I used crushed curry with Mango Melody Center. And then I added some Wink of Stella. I don't know, can you see that? To the centers, just to give it a little shimmer. But you see how I kind of blended these so you don't have any stark, you know, separations of color. The rest of the card is quite simple. The base is crushed curry at five and a half by eight and a half, folded in half. And then I cut a piece of basic black at four by five and a quarter. And that's it. Okay, so that's number two. And then number three. Okay, so this one is a little bit um, messier. Let me just say it like that. But it, it's still fun. I remember this one the most of all, and it's really cool too, because again, you're never going to get a duplicate. You can't replicate this at all. So let me get my stuff out. You're going to need a large piece of plastic wrap. And the hardest thing is trying to get these things opened up, you know what I mean? Of course, since it's so cheap, it's easier than if you <laughs> buy something from a good store. <laughs> then you're going to take two to three colors and just kind of lay them in the center of this plastic wrap. And um, I'm going to use crushed curry. And you may not even be able to see this much ah, when I first put it down. And then I'm going to add some um, <laughs> Old Faithful Old Olive, as I call it. I love this color, and I don't know if it'll ever go away. And um, the darker colors just kind of use the side of the pad so you don't overwhelm the whole thing. And then I'll use Cajun Craze. And these are really fall colors. These are what I think of as fall colors. And I wanted them for the look of this card, and you'll see why in a minute. So then what you do is you take a spritzer with water and let me try not to spray myself and spritz, 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 spritz. Isn't that cool? I like just looking at it like that. But you want to gather the four corners and make one smoosh. So this is plastic wrap smoosh technique. Now you don't want to smoosh too much or you'll get mud and it'll look crappy. Then, oh, see, I'm getting inked already. Ah, help me. <laughs> so then you want to layer a piece of shimmer paper over it. And um, I was surprised I still had some of this shimmer paper, but just lay it right on there. And this is where it gets a little messy. Okay, so if you want more coverage, just pick up more ink. It's that simple. Okay, what you can do if you see it like pooling anywhere, just kind of wick it, wick it, wick it, wick it. Then I did use the heat tool on this, and um, finally I ended up with my, with the very first one I did looking like this. So I wasn't, you know, that crazy about it and I just redid it and ended up with this one 
So you can see how different each one is going to look. And um, when you use the heat tool, this, this will flatten out. I'm sure you guys know that. But these are, are really cool, and I would use them, even though I, I don't like so much white space on this one, but I still would use it for a project. So after that, let me show you what I did. I took um, soft suede. Well, first my base here is old olive, eight and a half by five and a half, you know, folded in half. Then I stamped the image in soft suede from the Tuscan Vineyard stamp set. And the Just Breathe is from um, the Colorful Seasons stamp set. And I just love the sentiment. I find that I use it quite a lot. Then I just wrapped some good old linen thread around the piece, layered it onto a piece of Cajun craze that's four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and then added it to the base. So that one's not easy, even though it can be a little bit messy. Then the fourth and final one and I don't even know what to title this. You can come up with a title after you see what I've done. <laughs> um, and this has the potential to be probably the messiest one. Um, excuse all the rattling and stuff. But anyway, let me get situated here. What I'm going to do is take a piece of glossy paper and then this is a spritzer. <laughs> with alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Let me make sure. I better smell it. Could be water. Oh, no, that's rubbing alcohol. Okay, so I am going to spritz this paper. Let me not spritz myself with this rubbing alcohol. Oops, am I in frame? Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to make sure when I look at this that you could see everything I was doing. And put a few drops of Night of Navy reinker. Ding. And then I threw a little smoky slate on there too. Not much. Uh oh. Next, what I did was took another piece of saran wrap and just started blotting it. And I blotted and blotted and blotted and blotted till I got all the coverage that I wanted. Then I went back with um, a spritzer that I had filled, I don't know how long ago, with some um, glimmer and alcohol and I just hit it with that and set it aside to dry. Now when I say set aside to dry, I am not joking because <laughs> this takes a long time. Usually, you know, alcohol is supposed to dry quickly, but it sure didn't for me on this, probably because of the glossy paper. And I didn't want to use a heat tool because I didn't want the look to get I don't know, wonky or whatever. Um, so when it did dry, this is the effect that I got. Isn't that cool? You can see it shimmer shine. So what I did next was um, I ran it through the big shot with the blizzard thinlet dies. So of course I came out, it came out with all these cool I just love these snowflakes. Um, so I, I got those, but I didn't want to use it like that. I'll show you what I did do. I trimmed it down, and then I cut a piece of our silver glimmer paper to fit underneath it. And I just thought that was so stunning. Next, I layered a piece of Whisper White under that. And I, you know, this is crazy. I was not looking at numbers when I was trimming and stuff, so I came up with some really wonky measurements. So if you do this, you might want to pay more attention. Because I ended up with like 
my glimmer paper and glossy paper were three and seven eighths by four and fifteen sixteenths. Really, I would never put myself through that. So anyway, and then I layered it on a base card of um, Knight of Navy five and a half by eight and a half. The greeting came from the Stylish Seasons stamp set, which I won this, well, it was gifted to me because I helped out at vacation stamping school. I was so surprised. I was just more than happy to help out, but um, those ladies are so nice. They gave me a stamp set that I didn't have. So anyway, I stamped that greeting in Night of Navy on Whisper White, trimmed it out, layered it over some more Night of Navy, and added these cute little snowflakey things with some rhinestones. And that was my last demonstration, guys. So I hope you go out and try one or more of these oldie but goodie techniques and see what you can come up with. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye.